Hello, thank you for joining me on my YouTube channel. I'm Lou Collins and today I'll be making this card with you. Um, so we're going to be making the background completely from scratch from a piece of watercolour cardstock. It's using my Textures Floral Script stamps here. Um, these are the Sketched Flower stamp set. I've linked this and all the other products that I've used down below. Um, so I'm using these, I'm using Distress Oxides as well and I'm also using from my Steampunk collection the alphabet dies too. So um, go and grab some cardstock and some ink and let's have some fun. So the main focus for this card is going to be the Textures Floral Script products. So I've got the sketch stamps here, sketch floral stamps, and then we've also got the outline dies as well. Now I'm not actually going to be using the outline dies, but I just wanted to show you that you can purchase the stamps along with the outline dies as well. Um, but let's start with these stamps because these are just going to make a really beautiful background. Now the first part of this video isn't going to be the most exciting because I'm going to be stamping with clear ink onto watercolour paper. So this is a little postcard size piece of watercolour paper that's got as little texture as possible in it. Um, so with clear ink I'll be stamping onto that and then embossing it with a white embossing powder so you're not going to see a great deal now but I'll explain what I'm doing and I'll speed up the bits uh, where you can't really see much happening. So first thing to do is to choose which stamps you want to repeat stamp. Now what I usually do is go for the largest first of all because they're going to fill the biggest space and then I fill in the gaps with the smaller ones afterwards. So let's do this in stages. I'm going to put this gorgeous large floral, so it's the largest one in the whole set, in the centre there. Now while I'm doing this I could put a couple more around the edges. I want the flowers to kind of be coming, actually let's move that because I want the flowers to be coming off the edges. Let's start in one area and then we'll work our way around. So we've got lots here, so we've got um, elements that are uh, just foliage, some that are floral as well. You can see from my, <laughs> from my stamps that I've been using all sorts of different inks with them too. So let's pop this one here, so that fits quite nicely in that shape and what I'm trying to do is fit them together a little, a bit like a jigsaw so that they all sit side by side nicely. So let's just lay a few on. This one can come, let's pop this one along there, lovely. In fact I might get most of these on straight away. That one can come up the top. Like I say, I'm conscious that I want things to be coming off the edges. Let's pop that one there for now. Okay, so we can only hold our paper down in the centre there and in this corner. Right, let's press these. So with a stamping platform, just lifting those up. These ones are photopolymer stamps. I really need to clean these black ones. I haven't given them a wash and they've got embossing powder all over them, so they might be a little bit harder to... Um, stick to their stamping block but they're there so let's give them a good press while I apply my ink. So this is a clear embossing ink, this one is uh, Versamark. So just press all over the stamp here. Now before I pop this onto the paper I'm just going to dab over the paper with my anti-static bag because this way I'll make sure that if I've got any finger marks they're not going to pick up the embossing powder when we get to that stage. And it's a good idea here to uh, emboss in stages as well, just so your ink doesn't dry too much uh, and so you can see a little bit clearer where you're stamping. So laying that over there, I'm just checking because it feels like that's just catching on this corner so it's not quite going to stamp. So I'll lift that up. Hopefully that's okay. Right now, work your way around the card, the panel of cardstock pressing down in all the areas just to make sure. Now we've got a lot of stamps here, like I say, and um, you want to make sure that every area of every stamp is being pressed down. Usually with one stamp it would just be press and go, but for this one I just want to be extra sure because if any of those stamps are slightly overlapping or catching on anything that can affect what we're getting now. It looks, I'm just going to come over in this area because this is where I'm thinking it's not quite catching right but it looks okay to me right so now I'm going to remove this and I'm just going to sprinkle white embossing powder on top of that and heat set that stage 
Now I've heat set those flowers on there. Uh, you can just about pick up the highlights in the glossy um, heat embossing there. I'm going to pop this back on here. I can put my magnets over some of the flowers where I know that I'm not going to be putting stamps and I can come back in with my stamps and fill in those spaces. So that one can go there. I'm thinking this one might be able to go just here. A little bit of overlapping probably isn't the end of the world, um, but probably best not, not to overlap if you can help it. So I've got a nice branch there. I think that might fit. Oh, it may fit, it may not. Might fit just in there. So have a play. Just experiment with the different shapes that you can achieve. Yeah, I think that one can go there. And then I've got a small area here, which I've got a nice long branch. I think that will just sit nicely there. So I'm going to remove these stamps off my platform, re-stamp these with the clear ink, and then um, heat emboss again, and then we'll come back to the ink blending. There, so now I've covered that cardstock with random floral patterns, all stamped trying to interlock them and fit them all together a bit like a jigsaw to cover as much of the background as possible. Now, as I said, I'm using a watercolour paper or watercolour cardstock. This is because I want to do lots of ink blending on here now. Uh, I've got the uh, brand new Uncharted Mariner. This is a uh, beautiful ink colour. I really love it, but rather than just blending it in with my brush, I'm actually going to do a different sort of technique. So I'm bringing in a clear piece of plastic like a blending mat so this is going to be how I'm going to apply my ink today so a little bit of the uh, distress oxide on the mat I say a little bit it's actually it's a brand new ink pad so lots of ink comes off I'm going to be spritzing this and I'm going to turn over our paper with all that um, heat embossing on it and I'm just going to be picking this up and you'll see straight away You've got the resist there of those gorgeous florals. So just making sure I've covered the paper there. And then let's just take that off of there, popping this down a sec, and I'm just going to lightly heat that. Now the uh, emboss it, the ink colour is going to settle in areas around the embossing a little bit. So, uh, and that's a nice effect. So we're not going to try and discourage that at all. Just dry that off so it's flat again. You see the gorgeous colours coming through. We've got darker patches as well, particularly around the edge, but we can lift those up if we want them to look a little more like the rest there. So just taking any excess off from my background as well. There we go, okay. Perfect. Now I am going to take a piece of dry kitchen towel. I'm going to just buff over the heat embossing just to ensure as much as possible is off of that heat embossing. Okay, then I'm going to go in again. I think I'm going to add a little more ink just to make this slightly stronger. There we go. <clears throat> and again, I'm going to dab just small areas not all of it, into that stronger ink. The edges, bend the card so you catch, catch the middle as well. Probably focusing more on the edges here, give it a kind of vignette look. There we go, lovely. Okay, happy with that. So again, pop that to the side. You can leave that to air dry, or of course you can um, heat set that. Doesn't that look absolutely beautiful at the moment? If you're finding your paper warps what you need to do is you actually need to apply more water which seems strange you think you need to dry it more apply, apply some dampness some water to the reverse give that a minute or two to settle in now what that's doing is that's expanding those paper fibers on the other side that's what's happened to one side which is why it's warped it's bent but you're now doing the same effect to the other side and then again heat set or allow that to dry and that should then flatten out because you've got even amount of uh, expansion through the paper fibers from the front to the back. 
Lovely, there we go. So now I've got my background started. I want to encourage another colour, I want to incorporate another colour in with the Uncharted Mariner, which um, I'm quite excited about this actually because I love these two colours together and it's fossilised amber, so bringing some yellow in there. I'm going to do a very small amount of the smooching that we've seen already. So a tiny bit on there. Just tapping that in in a few places. And again, not all over, just a couple. You can see with the dampness, I'm starting to get some of the blue coming off because of course, distress oxides, distress inks, they are all water reactive. So as soon as they touch water, you're going to start getting that um, reaction there. Okay, so again, I'm going to lift off the excess to ensure my florals are coming through. Now I've got some beautiful greens running through there as well as the yellow. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick out yellow even more by applying that really quite neatly. There we go. So you can see that speckles of yellow running through. So now what I'm going to do is put a nice big blob of the, um, the which one is it, fossilised amber on there. I'm going to take a water pen, add the, just a drop or two of water in here, really not much at all. And this time I'm going to flick it over this gorgeous blue colour and these yellow speckles are going to stay, they're going to remain as they are. Now there's a number of ways you can do this, you can do it as you can see me hitting my pen, you can do it um, hitting your wrist as well if you prefer or if you can you can give it a flick of the wrist. There we go. Now, hopefully you can see we've got the lovely yellow showing through too. Now let me clean up. I'll dry that off and then we'll do the next stage. Now for this, we need to be clean. So that's some clean, fresh water, clean paintbrush, clean kitchen towel. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in to the florals and just brush some clean water just into the petals, into the leaves as well. And I'm going to allow the water to sit within that gap that's caused, that sort of valley that's caused by the heat embossing, just allowing the clean water to sit there just for a moment. Now, as I said earlier, the distress inks and the distress oxide ranges, they are all reactive with water. And as you saw earlier, when I was um, popping my dried um, uncharted mariner onto the, um, the yellow, the, the water of the yellow, that of course was then reactivating the Uncharted Mariner. Now that just means that this is going to happen the same as I'm putting the water on, that's going to reactivate the colour underneath. So probably work on just one at a time. You may lose track of where you were but you'll soon work it out. So hopefully that is all of that flower I've put water in the petals and in the leaves. Clean piece of kitchen towel. Let's press this over. You want to leave that about 30 seconds or so minimum. And there we go, lift that up. And hopefully you can see what's happened is that's lifted up some of the color from the flowers. So I'm going to go around all of these. Now, I'm not going to worry too much about the smaller flowers because they can be really fiddly, but I am going to do the um, the larger ones, the ones that are easier to go get into and remove the colour from those. You can also repeat this so you can go back over some if you feel they're not as bright as you hoped they would be. Just add some fresh, some more fresh water and they may pull off a little more ink to make them even brighter. Okay, so now that piece is completely dried off, I've cut myself a matte and layer that matches the colour of the fossilised amber ink that's in there as well as I possibly could. Um, I've also got a white card base to mat this all onto when I'm done as well. And I've started die cutting some sentiments. So I've got the word you there that's come from my steampunk type, type 
alphabet outline die set there we go so that's from the steampunk range of textures um, and it's one large die that cuts all your letters at once so you just need to run it through once it just means you're not going to lose any bits so i've cut from white cardstock um, the word you and also from some white double-sided foam there too so i'll pop those on in a minute now I'm just going to go around the edge of this first of all with that Uncharted Mariner because this way I'm going to have the um, gorgeous colour as like the, the focal point but it's going to be around the edge, it's going to be a little bit darker and just give this like I say a little bit of a vignette, not too much, it's also going to go over the embossing which we could either leave there or we can again buff off if we want to. It's entirely up to you which you look you prefer. So just being careful not to smudge anything. I'm using a blending brush. Just popping that into there. So we've got that vignette. Now I'm going to take a little bit of tissue and just like I say, just buff off the embossing ink there the florals so leaving the dark in the background but picking that white those white flowers out the darker your background the more you're going to see the flowers anyway so we've still got the vignette just means the flowers are now standing out more okay pop that side to clean that up later let's start putting this card together now i want to have a lovely circle in the middle i also want to see the matte and layer of the yellow underneath so i've got two circle dies uh, one slightly smaller than the other. I'm going to place the first one just in the center towards the top. Uh, about there. I'm going to use some low tack tape just to hold that down, but I'm going to place the low tack tape in the center of the circle, not on the outside, just in case it peels any of the color off. And die cut this. Now that's definitely a circle that I will be using another time. Just see as I peel that off, because the cardstock is a watercolour cardstock, did lose a little bit of the colour, so uh, maybe I won't be using it another time, but you can see I've preserved the frame that I want to keep. Now, positioning this onto my cardstock, I'm then going to take the smaller die and use that circle as a guide there. And then I'm going to use another piece of low tack tape to die cut that circle out. So re really make sure all the way around that your frame, your border around the edge is perf the perfect size, nice and even. And then pop that circle down in the middle. Mm. Run this through. So now you should have a mat for your gorgeous paper that your backing paper that you've created and that will sit beautifully on top of that card there now all of this is going to go down with foam tape now because of the inking that we've been doing i've got blue on my fingers and i want to put a lovely bright white sentiment on here so i don't want to be touching that white cardstock right now i'm going to go and wash my hands um, they're probably stained, so it'll take a few days for that to come out, but if I wash them with soapy water now, I'll get the excess off and then I can go ahead and touch the white cardstock and I know that nothing's going to transfer. So that's marginally better. Okay, so now I've got my words and I've also got the foam for this. So this is the word you. I then cut from the geometrics range. I'll link everything down below. I've cut from the geometrics pattern paper, uh, perfect and R. So I'm going to have you are perfect. You being the standout word, but I wanted this in white and I wanted to make sure it just, um, it's subtle, clean and simple. So white on white, which is one of my favorite colorways. So I'm just taking the backing off the first letter there and placing the cardstock letter over the top and lining it up. There we go. Now I'm doubtful that these are going to fit on perfectly in within that circle. So we may find that I need to um, actually add some more foam tape under maybe the middle letter, but we shall see once these are all lined up.
Now, as I thought, the, um, the Y and the U are just overlapping the yellow frame around the edge. Now, because I put the yellow mat on with some um, foam pads, that's then giving my sentiment a bit of a dip. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut another layer of foam for the all three letters, but I'm going to snip the edges off the Y and the U. So hopefully that will all sit in there nice and flush. There we go. Now my sentiment is nice and flat all the way across. Uh, I just need to finish off with my You Are Perfect sentiment. So I might put that just like so. So there we have a finished card, a pretty floral background with some uh, beautiful distressing in there using the new Uncharted Mariner colour and fossilised amber, both in distress oxides. Um, then I've used the Textures Floral Script Sketched Flowers stamp set and I've used the uh, Steampunk, again from Textures, Steampunk uh, Alphabet Outline die set too. So. Uh, I'd love to see if you try this technique with stamping, distressing, heat embossing uh, and lifting up areas with water. Um, by the way, you can find me on Facebook, on Instagram and of course you can subscribe here on YouTube.